You're listening to the Higher Ideas Podcast, where ideas grow. Connect on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, or higherideas.net. Now here's your host, I. Hi everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. So today the topic is the shadow side, and it's something that's important for all of us to be aware of. Now what do I mean by the shadow side? Well, First of all, we have to remember that we live in a universe of duality. We live in a reality of duality. Everything that exists, every single thing that manifests and exists in this world has an equal and opposite counterpart. And that's true of absolutely everything you can think of. Physical, non-physical, theoretical or solid, every single thing has an opposite. There would be no shadow without light. There would be no up without down. There would be no left without right. There would be no cold without heat. We wouldn't know joy without sorrow. We wouldn't know pain without comfort. We wouldn't know hard without soft. We wouldn't know dry without wet, and so on. Everything from concepts to matter have an opposite. And even physics says every action creates an equal but opposite reaction. So even actions have shadows. So why am I mentioning this? Why am I mentioning this possibly obvious fact about reality? Well, here's the thing. Your mind, your heart, your soul, your motivations, your thoughts, they exist and manifest in this reality too. And as such, everything inside you has an opposite. And that's important to remember, because as hard as you may try to be a good person and to do actions that do no harm and use your gifts for good, You have to remain always aware that you could just as easily use that power for bad. That's your shadow side. Your shadow side is an exact opposite of all your best qualities. Or more specifically, your best qualities applied with opposite intent. Now I'm going to assume that most of you listening are good people, or at least try to be good people. And this is important to know, and this is important to remain always aware of, because it's so easy in a moment of anger, in a moment of weakness, in a moment of selfishness, to turn our great gifts that we cultivate for good into a very destructive force. Let me get into examples. There's a type of personality out there that is amazing at making large groups of friends. They have social richness. They have social wealth. They are very good at maintaining a large and spread out network of connections, people that appreciate them and, and, and feel that they're close to this person. And so this person has a wealth of social connection. When it comes to social life, I would describe myself as socially handicapped. I've always had trouble holding more than one or two friends at a time. And that's because I focus on getting close to people, really close. And that's hard to do with a lot of people. So by default, I don't know many people at once. I can't handle it. It's too much. There's not enough of me to go around with the strength that I want to go around. But a few times in my life, I've run into this social master, this social rich man. And I've met such people. And they're always very friendly. Of course, that's one of the ways in which you keep a lot of friends, is to at least appear friendly. But I've run into a problem a couple times with such people, where for one reason or another, usually not really a big serious reason, this person will decide to dislike me, and decide to cut me off. And this has happened more than once, this reaction of theirs, which is, they don't just cut me off, and just walk away. They will cut you off and then go into the complete opposite of who they were. They become hateful and they become spiteful and they hold a grudge. Even if you didn't do anything, they just decide to start hating you. 
And it doesn't even stop there, that's already bad enough, especially when it's unwarranted. But then they'll go even further and make sure to use their network of friends to spread bad opinions about you through all these other people that may not even care to know this about you, whatever the lie is or whatever the poison being spread is. But they'll go into this momentary lapse of judgment where they spread this malicious intent all throughout their network. They poison their whole network against you. And then you will lose any friends you made through this person. And that's, that's sinister. That's not very nice. That's not very fair. If you have a personal beef with someone, you should just cut yourself away from there. Why cut your entire network away? Now you might think, no big deal, right? That's not such a big deal. But you have to understand, in the example of a person like me, who has trouble making connections and trouble making friends, that is a big piece of damage that you inflict on my world when I lose a bunch of people I was starting to connect to. That's pretty damaging. And furthermore, when it comes to something like the workplace, then you're starting to mess with someone's livelihood. Spreading poisonous ideas about someone through your social network in a workplace can get someone out of a job, can land someone on the street. It could have someone denied a position because somehow one of your friends spread that information further into a superior, and then when that person meets you, having never met you before, they'll already have this negative impression, all coming from this one guy that had something up his ass and had to spread negativity through his network. And I've been on the bad side of this. I've had this happen to me. But the point is this. The point is, these people that behave this way have a great strength, a social power. And for the most part, they seem positive, they seem like good people, and they get that power through positivity. But then in a moment of weakness, a moment of anger, ego, or just misunderstanding, it's so easy for such people to fly off the handle and apply that power in a way that is more destructive than they probably intended. And if they sat back and looked at it later on, they'd probably realize, wow, I really overreacted there. Now that's your shadow side. That's you falling into your shadow side. So that might be a little bit of a complicated example, but basically what I'm trying to express here is that all of your gifts, all of your strengths, all of your talents, and let's call them virtues, that you try to apply for good in this world can just as easily be applied for equally as much destruction. That is part of the dual nature of our reality. And you have to remain aware of this. You cannot delude yourself into thinking that you're a pure and harmless being that can't do any wrong. It's very important to remain aware as a person that all your talents and all your skills that I hope you're applying constructively can be just as quickly and easily applied destructively. And as much as possible, try to avoid falling into that because you always end up hurting people a lot more than you expect. And you don't know the damage that you might do. Accidentally, it's not worth it. Here's another way to put it. The brighter the light, the sharper the shadow. What are your strengths? What are your talents, virtues? Figure it out. That's the first step. And now figure out how those can be used destructively. And you will have seen your shadow side. You will become aware of what your shadow side looks like. And knowing that, you'll be able to be on guard for it. Now let me go through this exercise with myself right now. What are my virtues? What are my strengths? Well, I'm creative. I'm very imaginative. I'm relatively good at expressing my thoughts. And above all, I'm very good at convincing people of my ideas. Now all of these I have tried my best to use for good, to use productively, to use to bring other people up instead of bring them down. And same with myself, to bring myself up instead of bring myself down. I've been using these talents to create and to build. But these talents could be used to destroy I could use my imagination and creativity combined with 
my talent for expressing myself, convincing people of my ideas. I could use these virtues and skills to be an amazingly good liar if I wanted to. It would be very easy for me to bullshit my way through life. To bullshit my way into a job, into bed with people I find attractive. I could become a politician and rise to the top like a meteor if I applied myself with evil intent, if I use my talents to manipulate and cheat and lie my way to the top, I know that I could succeed. But that's not the intent that I'm aligned with. But I can think of moments in my life where I used my gifts selfishly. Now here's a perfect and harmless example. I was a kid, and an aunt of mine, who I didn't particularly like, had taken me to a fast food restaurant. And I saw that they were selling cameras. Such a silly thing. Small, cheap cameras. And I wanted a camera. I saw this camera and I wanted it. But I knew if I asked for it directly, with her personality, I wouldn't get it. Because she was a person who loved to manipulate herself and loved to play games with people and not give them what they want. So I had a puzzle. What to do? Well, as I said, I can use my gifts negatively to manipulate people. And in that moment, without thinking much, I knew exactly what to say to get her to get me that camera. I laid the seed in her mind. I put in a few words that would result in me getting that camera. And I walked over to the seat where we would sit, and I sat down, leaving her in line to order our meal. And soon enough, she came around with the tray, with a smile on her face, and she gave me a camera. And she said, I thought I'd buy you this little treat. And in my childlike innocence, I immediately told her I knew you'd buy me that camera because I just manipulated you into it. I just admitted it, point blank. I pointed out what I said and how it led to her buying me that camera. But then I saw the expression on her face. She had done something with a genuine intent to give me a gift. And then when she realized that she did it because I manipulated her into it, it turned that positive emotion into an emotion that was equally negative. I saw it on her face. And as a perceptive kid, I realized immediately, wow, that's not good what I just did. That's, that's not what I want to put out. A perfectly innocuous example of falling victim to your shadow side, which only happens when you're not aware of it. When you're not aware of your ability to be destructive, harmful with your gifts. And to me, it also stands as an example of why it's not even worth it. Because in the end, I didn't even enjoy that camera. Because then all it reminded me was of that negativity I created. That sneaky thing I did. Whereas if she would have bought that for me, genuinely as a surprise, and I would have been pleased, then I would have enjoyed the hell out of that camera. And it would have represented goodwill from an aunt who I didn't previously like that much. I felt justified in manipulating her because she herself was manipulative. But even then, it wasn't worth it, because I ended up feeling like an asshole and guilty. All sorts of negativity that, that came out of that simple slip into my shadow side. There's another duality in this world. Good and evil. Love and hate. And I'm definitely aligned with love and good. I'm a creature of good intent. And so naturally I've applied these gifts for good. But I need to remain aware all the time that I can easily slip into using them in a selfish way, using them in a destructive way, in a spiteful way. And there have been many opportunities where I could have used these very effectively to destroy someone, to win, to rise above others by stepping on their necks. But being aware of my shadow side, I know that, no sir, you will not get me. I see you. That's the first step, to see it. And you might say I'm a sucker for not embracing it. I would be rich and powerful if I embraced my shadow side. As many people do in politics, in business, in various sorts of competitive situ situations. 
But I felt the effects of people falling into their shadow side. I felt it on me. And I know it can be a lot more destructive than that person thinks. And furthermore, I know that it just ends up biting you in the ass too, as the person falling into your shadow side. Destruction only breeds more destruction. Hate only brings more hate. And if you're aligning yourself with this negative direction behind your actions, then you're eventually heading into destruction yourself. That's just how it goes. You can either go up, or you can go down. You could burn in a glory of selfishness. You could go down with the ship and take everyone down with you. Or you can rise in the glory of love, and you could bring everyone else up with you. But this is how humanity works. Community, society. If you bring yourself down, you bring us all down. And if you bring yourself up, you bring us all up. And if you're sick of society falling into the shadow side of things, then the first step is to stop falling into it yourself. And to demand more of yourself. And as I mentioned in my episode about leadership, automatically others will follow. If they see what you're doing is worthy and inspirational, they will follow. And everyone will rise around you. I hope this has made sense. It's a concept I've been wanting to express for a while, but I find it difficult to explain. And here's another twist on this information. If there's any of you listening out there that are definitely on the dark side, that use their talents selfishly, that use their talents destructively, negatively, maliciously, just generally destructive people, be aware that you too can be just as equally constructive. You can be just as powerfully good. It goes both ways. The deeper you venture into your dark side, the more room you make on the other side of the line. And it's just that easy to turn around and step across that line and occupy the opposite space. Just as easy as it is for a good person to fall into darkness, a person lost in darkness can rise into light. And furthermore, be aware of this in people around you. If there's someone near you who is very, very strong and good in any way, always be on guard and remember that they can be just that evil. And likewise, be aware that if there's someone in your life who's miserable and destructive and just cruel, that's how much potential they have to love. If they can just find their way out of it. And if you can be the person to turn them around and bring them back across that line, into the constructive side of things. That's how much good you will have unleashed on this world. And if you bring someone good down, that's how much destruction you bring on this world. It's a beautiful balance. It's a fascinating correlation. And once you have that concept in mind, you'll see it everywhere. In short, what I'm telling you is, Gandhi could have been Hitler, and Hitler could have been Gandhi. Powerful people that accomplished powerful things. The only difference is which way they align themselves. All of us have gifts and power. The only decision you have to make, really, is which direction you apply it in. Build or destroy. Rise or fall. Love or hate. So figure it out. And my humble suggestion is to stay on the side of light. It's a lot more pleasant for everyone. That's it for this one. Till next time.